The style panel is an incredible way to design your website, so let's talk about it. Let's create a multi-column layout. We're going to create three different cards. First, I'm going to create a section for everything I'm containing in here, and I'm going to change the tag to section. And then in here, I'm going to create my first card. We could even rename this as card just so it's easy to scan for ourselves. In our card, we're going to add a heading and a paragraph. Let's give the card some styles. Let's head over to the style tab. And I first want to give it some padding. We could change one side, but we could also hold down shift so it changes all sides at the same time. And we'll settle on 25 pixels. We're going to give it a background color. And I'm going to go down to a dark gray. And then I'm going to change the color. I'm going to do that up here, and everything below it should inherit it. And we'll give it a lighter gray. Lastly, I want to give it a border radius of two rems. So I'm going to specify that here. And actually, I don't like that, so I'm going to use the arrow down and go to one rem. Great. Now I'm going to add another card. We're going to call this card and add our heading and our paragraph. And we can continue on styling this. And I can give it the background I did before, maybe copy and paste it over here. But wait a second, a red flag should be going off in your head and say, this is not efficient. We're not creating maintainable designs. I'm having to repeat my efforts. There must be a better way to create consistent designs. And in fact, there is. And if that light didn't go off in your head, it's okay, because a lot of platforms don't give you this tool. I'm going to show you how we can reuse the styles from this card and put them on these next cards. And also, we still need to create the multi-column layout, which we'll do next. First of all, we can see that the properties that I have set have turned to blue, meaning that they are set right here. We've actually changed them. And up top, we haven't talked about this yet. This item has been selected. This stands for local. It just means we're impacting the very instance that we've selected right now. But instead of it just being this one, I want it to impact multiple ones. So I'm going to teach you the concept of tokens. We're going to click the drop down and say convert to token. And we're going to call this card because that's what they are, but you can name it whatever you want. On the next card, I'm going to go over here and select my token from the drop down. And now this card is using the same styles. So you can attach styles to tokens and put your tokens on different instances within Web Studio and all of the styles will show up there. And you can also use multiple tokens, as many as you want. So maybe I also want to have a separate border token here on my border token. And notice that we're creating the token right off the bat. We're not starting with local and converting it. I know I want a border, so I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to select the border style. I'm going to give it a slightly lighter gray, and we're going to give it three pixels of width. Now that's on this one, but I also want it to be on the other one. So I'm going to set border here. We could have attached the border to the card as well. There's just different strategies in doing this. So now anytime we make a change to, for example, the card style, it's going to change everything that has that. Let's bring back that darker gray that we had before. Tokens are an amazing way to stay consistent across your designs. There's so much you can do with them, but I want to show you how to create a multi-column layout. So far, the things we've covered have been relatively self-explanatory. You change a background color, you get a background color. Not everything in the style panel is that way, and some of it may require a little bit of further education to understand what it does. Display may be one of those. So we're going to go up to the parent of our two cards and change the default display under layout from block to flex. Flex gives us a vertical and horizontal axis that we can control the child instances on. By default, it put it in a row, but we can also change it to a column. We can also change the where it's at on the axis. So I can select the middle, and I can even select a gap between them. Now I can duplicate my cards, and they'll follow on this axis. Now, if there's too many, I need to give them the ability to wrap. And so that's going to be this button right here, Flex Wrap. We click that. And now once they extend a little bit too far, they'll wrap to the next line. There's a lot going on in Flex and there's much to learn, but I didn't want you to be frustrated in trying to create a multi-column layout, especially if you were looking in the components. Creating layouts is a style thing, and you're going to mainly do that with Flex. One more thing I want to mention in the style panel is how to learn the different properties. The first way to do it is by hovering over the properties, and you'll get a little bit of information about it. The second is searching these. We didn't come up with these names. These are industry accepted names. They are the actual CSS names you'll find online. So you can search for you know, CSS width or CSS max height, CSS flex, whatever it might be, and you'll find a bunch of documentation online teaching you about these different CSS properties. That is the quick breakdown of the Web Studio style panel.